What's up everyone, Jeremy here from MTG Headquarters, and of course, as per usual, Colt is, of course, trying to steal the show. No matter how hard I try to get him to lay in his cat tree, he just has to lay on my playmat while I'm filming, and then spill a cup of iced tea. Classic Colt. Well, anyway, <laughs> we have... A box of Fate Reforged. We haven't opened a box of Fate Reforged in a, quite some time. And this one comes from the awesome channel sponsor, Trollandtoad.com. Um, you've probably heard of them. You've probably heard me mention them before. I'm going to have a Troll and Toad giveaway coming up for a uh, Fate Reforged fat pack. So make sure that you uh, follow up on that. Go check out their website in the uh, description below. Check it out. See what's up. And uh, maybe stop by their Facebook page and uh, thank them for the uh, HQ support. Uh, I don't know um, how prices have fluctuated uh, since you know the set's been out for a few weeks, but there's still a lot of spicy pulls that we're gonna try to get. Still waiting for a crazy foil rare. Um, I've opened a few Ugans. I don't know how long he's going to stay so spendy. He's probably already starting to drop. Uh, I've been drafting the heck out of Fate Reforged. And uh, it's certainly a different experience. There's a lot of removal in the set. And a lot of games and draft seem to go to time. So that's interesting. Con seemed a lot faster. This seemed to slow it down a little bit. But it did give the support. I think it helped even out most of the... Uh, I think it helped even out most of the clans. So really any clan uh, can be competitive in draft. Where in cons, I, th I thought Sultai um, was at a, a general disadvantage. I think it's stronger now. But So let's go through these packs again. Uh... Check out Troll and Toad. Just go check out their website. You know. Let them feel the HQ love. I know they've always got good deals going on. And they were running a crazy deal on Fetch Lions last week. And so you want to kind of stay tuned. Also be on the lookout for their giveaway. Enough shilling. Time to get to cracking. Uh, since the set's been out long enough, I think we can just go right to the uncommons and move on with our lives. Let's see what we have. Cash defenses. Very good card and draft. Lotus Eye Mystics. Also very good. Ruthless Instincts. Probably my favorite trick. One of my favorite tricks in the new set. And a Scroll of the Masters. Two mana... Uh, whenever you cast a night creature spell, put a lore counter, pay three and tap, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one will end of turn for each lore counter on Scroll of the Masters. We have a Jungle Hollow. There is a... I don't like calling them dual lands. I'll call them by lands in uh, every pack. So that does help with drafting, although it does get a little dicey still at times. We have an elite scale guard here. Dark deal. Sib Sig Merc Draggers. And a Crucible of the Spirit Dragon. And we're starting out with two pretty terrible rares. And a Swift Water Cliffs. Hopefully we'll just get those right out of the way. Ring River Prowler. Pretty good. Break through the line. Valor Stance, very good. First pickable all day. And a Flame Rush Rider. Also, I think first pickable. It's extremely powerful in limited format. And we have a Foil Noxious Dragon. It's cool looking. A Swiftwater Cliffs. And of course, why wouldn't the cat want out? He says he's very sorry. He's got very important business meetings to attend. He wished he could be here. All right. Winds of Kalsima. Elite Scale Guard. 
break through the line. And a rare Master of the Unseen. Very, very good card and limited. Allows you to continue to manifest the top card of your library, so late game. It's very powerful. I don't mind first picking that. Uh, but I think there are better options. I'd probably rather first pick a... Um, The, not the ankle shanker. What did I want to call him? You know what I mean? The four mana haster. Four mana with dash that can block. You guys know what I'm talking about. Goblin heel cutter. Light form. Shock maw dragon. Channel harm. This is a, kind of a fun rare. Sage Eye Avengers, absolute limited bomb, 6 mana, 4, 5 with prowess, but whenever it attacks, you may return target creature to its owner's hand if its power is less than Sage Eye Avengers. That card hits the table, and it's big, big trouble. Because you can trigger prowess early to get an extra point or two of power and then attack. You can, you can play it a lot of different ways. Here's Huge Stone ret Retainers. Renowned Weaponsmith, Mistfire Adept, and a Warden of the first three. Our first Mythic, Absolute Bomb, like most Mythics. Uh, but it can just take over the game and limit it if it hits the board on turn one. You don't have an immediate answer for it. Warden is a thing. I think the kids say that. The kids say that. Orc Sure Shot's very good. Gray Strength, no. Pilgrim of the Fires, and Slumgar. Absolute Limited Bomb. I think people were kind of talking about this as a possible finisher, but I don't think it outclasses Pearl Lake Ancient totally. I haven't seen it being played a ton, but it's extremely good in Limited for sure. Dragon Tribal. EDH Dragons. Sure. Orc Sure Shot. Very good uncommon. Ruthless Instincts. Better uncommon, in my opinion. Shock Maw Dragon. And Ojatai. Soul of the Winter. Another insane limited bomb. 5 6 Flying Vigilance when it controls. When a dragon you control attacks, tap target non land permanent and opponent controls. That permit does not untap during their next untap step. Very good. EDH Dragon Tribals, probably. We have a foil obs on advantage. All right. So holding off for that foil Ugin or foil monastery mentor. Pyrotechnics, very good. Humble defector. You can have some shenanigans with that. Right of undoing. It's okay. And wild call. Um, uh, this is okay. Uh, late game, it's pretty good because you can basically get an XX creature for two green and X. Uh, if it's another, if it's a relevant creature that you happen to manifest, it's even better. We have a foil. Sultai Rune Mark. And a Windscarred Craig. Later today, I'll be uh, opening up the... Nemesis Fat Pack for this Friday. I'm going to try to do them every Friday as long as I can afford to do them for you guys. So there's something for you to get a little excited about. Maybe I can get some help from uh, channel sponsor, Troll and Toad. Maybe they have something I need. And then give me a killer deal. Jeskai Barricade. Vault Breaker. Destructor Dragon. All these dra dragons are very playable and limited. And a rare is a Stan Seep Macedon. Uh, limited bomb uh, comes in. I mean, it's 10 power for 7 mana. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, polluted delta. That is the uh, one you want. If you're going to get a uh, fetch line in this box, I would say a polluted delta is a good one to get. That is a very nice pull. Helps bring up our box total. As we try to try to 
live the dream and go infinite. Fascination, Rage Form, Merciless Executioner, and Alicia who smiles at death. Incredible draft card, very, very good. Windmill slam it every time in pack one for me anyway. Uh, very, very good. And we have a Windscarred Craig. I'm actually, for those of you that don't know, I'm slowly making the transition to paper right now. I haven't decided if I'm going to totally cut off MTGO because I do have a stream to maintain. But uh, I hope to hit FNM starting next week. I ordered my uh, mono black deck, which you guys are going to get a deck tech on later this week. They've actually been doing pretty good. Fascination, Shifting Loyalties, Channel Harm, and Torrent Elemental. Very, very good in draft. I, I have not seen it played anywhere else. That doesn't mean it isn't. It's a very good mythic. Very aggressive, undoubtedly. And if you can delve it away and then bring it back, that's also very good. Oop, we have a foil arc bond. Our foil rare is arc bond. It's kind of a letdown, but you know. There's a lot of rares in the set, and usually you get one foil rare in the whole box, so uh, <laughs> there's a lot of odds to miss. Teamer Sabretooth, Mind Scour Dragon. Teamer Sabretooth is a key part of the uh, Teamer Ascendancy deck, right? Neutralizing Blast. Palace Siege. First pick of all day long. I don't know if it sees any love anywhere else. Seems unlikely. Definitely. The Sieges definitely make lim our big advantage and limited. Just about all of them are pretty good. There's our heel cutter. Draft last night. I had two of them on the board at the same time. It was... It's pretty fun. Battlefront Krushkak. Krushak. Wild Slash. Very good. Noxious Dragon. And a Tazigar. Seen some play. It's a spendy card. Nice pull. 4 5 for 6, but you have Delve. But more importantly, you can also put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, then return an online card of opponent's choice from the graveyard to your hand. What's great is you can use Delve to delve away anything you don't want them to be able to choose. So you delve away all your, your junk you don't want and you leave your opponent with, you know, very few good options. If you can. Ashran Warbeast, Dragon Rage, Bloodfire Enforcers. And Dragon Scale General. Very good Obzon card. Probably first pickable. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yes, this is the Obzon card. This is not the one I was thinking of, but it is still very first pickable in uh, an aggressive Obzon or Mardu deck. Uh, actually, in any deck, this, this card's pretty darn good. As long as you're able to attack with some consistency. A Foil, Bloodfell, Caves. And a Windscard Craig. And a Warrior Token. Somebody asked me to show the token, so there's your token. I don't know if we're going to see an Ugin in this box because we've already gotten those kind of two other mythics, and I don't think I've got those two together in a box, but I could be wrong. We're now Weaponsmith. Obs on Beastmaster, very good. It's a removal magnet, but it's really good. Wandering Champion. And Mardu Strike Leader, another first pickable card. 3-2, and uh, every time it attacks, it poops out a 2-1 Warrior Token. It also has Dash all around. Very aggressive, well-designed card. And there's your token. Mardu got a lot stronger with Fate Reforged. That is a, that is a fact. Alright, Misfire Adept. Fruit of the First Tree, Valorous Stance, and Arc Fiend of Depravity. I've yet to open this in any draft, but it is a Windmill Slam, uh, especially since it's your first pack anyway. 5-4 um, Flying for 5 is already good, and then making them have no more than 2 creatures is even better. And Bloodfell Caves. I was talking to the guys from my locals last night. I, th I think I decided that I won't miss three-color drafts. 
I like what it does to drafting. It does add a layer of complexity, but it also adds a lot of really crappy games where like either you or your opponent gets mana screwed. Ward Skill Dragon, Goblin Boom Keg, Karsai High Priest, and a Jeskai Infiltrator, very good in draft, and sealed, maybe other formats. I don't see it in standard, obviously, but there may be other uses for it. Um, you know, like last night I took second place at the draft, but every match I was either, it was like, I got stuck on two colors or they got stuck on two colors and I don't know. It just seems like that happens a lot. Sage's Reverie. Battle Brawler, very good. In the, in the uh, Warrior deck. Hero's Blade. And a Frontier Siege. Pretty good. Definitely uh, good early. It's really good if you're casting at turn four. It's not anywhere near as good if you're casting it late or you're top decking it like the other sieges. So I'm kind of on the fence about running that card in a draft deck. I think it's good, but it's kind of a dead card late. Unlike maybe uh, the white or black sieges. Mardu Woe Reaper, Battlefront Krushak, Morang River Prowler, and Soul Flare. This is very good. Six mana, four, four with delve, and it gets all the abilities of anything you delved to cast it. So again, it it's okay. A six mana with delve for four, four, definitely good. If you have anything with any abilities in your graveyard, it's even better. Uh, but in this draft, like, I mean, if you have it in the Obzon deck, it's probably really good. Sultai... I guess Death Touch and Flying are reasonable that you might have, which is good. 4-4 four, four Death Touch Flyer. But I really want First Strike for that to for that card to be OP, you know? Hungering Yeti. Not OP, but just, you know. Frostwalker, very good. Dragon Rage. Citadel Siege. This is the one I think is the best. You can either put two counters on creatures you control or uh, tap a target creature that player control. So again, this one is good early or late, I think. And it's also good when you're ahead or you're behind. In my opinion. Merciless Executioner, Fearsome Awakening, Cash Defenses, Mob Rule. This card is hilarious. It's very powerful. You can just take their entire army, typically, or maybe everything but one, and then hit them in the face with it. Very, very, very good finisher in a Mardu deck. Um, Jeskai, maybe. I guess that card's just good all around. It's six mana, so... It's like... If they have, it's like the equivalent, typically they have maybe two or three creatures, so for like six mana, you're casting two active treasons, kind of. So it's not as crazy as you would think, like especially if they don't have any creatures on board or just one or something, but it's generally pretty good. Goblin Boom Keg, Ugin's Construct, Wild Slash, and a Crux of Fate. There we go. Spicy Removal. Scoured Barons. So only one uh, fetchy in this box. No Ugin. No Monastery. Mentors. But overall, it's been a pretty good box. Frostwalker. Mardu Shadow Sphere. This uh, Shadow Spear. This is actually in my mono black deck. Dark Deal. And uh, Colligan. Colligan, 4-5, Insano Dragon. If you're in Mardu, you play this, that's a Windmill Slam. I, I think it's very first pickable in any scenario, even though it is going to be our first pack. It's pretty, pretty good. Although, as you guys know, if you watch me stream, I do tend to taking those powerful finishers over maybe some staples early. But if you're in Mardu... Like, you can get all the Mardu you want later. I guess maybe you could 
make an argument for like a foil brutal horde chief or something in that same pack. Light form, shock maw dragon, channel harm, and a brutal horde chief. College shots. This guy's also in my mono black aggro build. Mythic. That is our third mythic. Our third mythic. And a foil planes. I don't think we're going to find Mr. Ugin. But it'd be nice to maybe get some pieces or a couple more fetchies. Huge stone retainers. Obs on Kingguard, very good. Shifting loyalties. And he has Silva Dragon Claw. This card is really good in draft um, in an aggressive teamer build. You know, it's everything you want out of a 3-mana 4-2 rare. I mean, it's just crazy good. And it becomes a real problem if you're behind. If you can't get rid of that thing... Like, early removal, I think, is more important than late removal in this set. Because there's so many ways for someone to just jump out on you. Like, I had somebody casting last night Gore Swine into Jeskai Runemark into that... Um, Teamer Battle Rage and just kill me like on turn five. I had nothing, I had no answer for it. And it was a one toughness and then a three toughness, and I had no answer. I just lost the draft. Um, it was crazy. 6 6 Flying Double Striker is a thing. Noxious Dragon, Honor's Reward, Hungering Yeti, and Outpost Siege. This one is not very good. I guess it's okay. I shouldn't say that, but all the sieges are good in draft, but I like this one the least. Lots of warrior tokens. Warrior tokens, come out and play. Humble defector. Reality shift. I pulled a foil one of these the other day. Someone said it was like nearly ten dollar card, so that was cool. Fearsome awakening. Shamanic shamanic revelation. Draw a card for each creature you control. Um, and it has ferocious, you know. I think that's a, you know, I think it's probably okay in draft. People were saying, I mean, there's just so few card draw options in green that you almost have to, you almost consider it. Um, drawing cards is good. Sage's Reverie, Hero's Blade, Life Form, and Supplant Form. This is pretty good. Return target creature to its owner's hand, and you put a token on the battlefield that to copy that creature. You can use it to defend your creature. You can tempo play at the end. You know, at their end step, you can play this. It gets pretty spicy. Well, we're trimming on down. So if you happen to be new to MTG Headquarters, we're doing more giveaways than ever. We've got more channel sponsors than ever. So now's a great time to make sure you crush that subscribe button so you get notified each and every time. I upload a video. Thanks again to trollandtoad.com for sending this. I actually have videos on how to use their buy list and how to navigate their website. And um, they've been a really awesome supporter. Orc Sure Shot, Grave Strength, Pilgrim of the Fires, and Rally the Ancestors. Oh, there. Wooded Foothills. Okay. That card's probably going up in price, uh, maybe, because it's Teamer Ascendancy deck. Squeezing a second fetch out of this box is good. We haven't pulled a ton of value otherwise. Which is why people don't open boxes. But I do because it's fun. And I collect. Fascination. Rage Form. Merciless Executioner. And Shuyun the Silent Tempest. Very good. Definitely first pickable. If it was just a 3 tooth prowess, it's probably still first pickable uh, for 3, I mean. And the other ability makes it pretty, pretty bananas. Honor's Reward. Friendly Fire. Card stinks. Sib Sig Merc Dragons. Oh, yeah! Random Ugin. I did not think we were going to get him in this box. 
Nice finish. There's only four packs left, too. Oh, and there's a foil. Obs on side captain. Wouldn't it have been hilarious if it was a monastery mentor? <laughs> I saw the 2 2 and I was like, uh. But still, Ugin pull. Ugin and two fetch lands make up a large portion of the cost of this box. So that's good. Sudden Reclamation. This card is very good. Winds of Kalsima. Ward Scale Dragon. And another Slumgar. How about we finish off with... We got three packs left. Will we find a Fetchy? How about a Fetchy Mentor same pack? Why not? If we're going to be greedy, why won't we just go all the way, right? Pilgrim of the Fires. Mardu Shadow Sphere, Garsa High Priest, Sage Eye Avengers. All right, two packs left. So yeah, do me a favor and follow that link in the description below. At least go check out Troll and Toad. Uh, they're lo they're somewhat local here in the U.S. They've been around a really long time. They do Pokemon cards too. If you play other TCGs, they've got a lot of uh, a lot other options too. Cash Defenses, Lotus Eye Mystics, Ruthless Instincts, Instincts, and an Arc Bond. Tranquil Cove. All right, last pack. Hope you guys enjoyed this box. Make sure you stay tuned as we continue our 75,000 subscriber celebration by opening up one of every fat pack ever made. This week features Nemesis. There are some crazy expensive foils in that set. Maybe we'll find one. Diplomacy of Wastes. Reality Shift. Sudden Reclamation. And Teamer War Shaman. Wah, 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 wah. Foil Battlefront Kershock. And a Rugged Highlands. Okay, well, let's go through our rares. Uh, at least the notable ones. Um... So Ugin is very good, obviously. Wood of Foothills, Supplant Form, Brutal Horde Chief, uh, I happen to need for my mono black deck. Crux of Fate, um, let's see. Taziger, he's got some value to him now. Our Foil Rare was Arc Bond. We have a Torrent Elemental, Polluted Delta, which is great. It's just a great. Great thing to open, especially in draft. Just pay for your draft right away. Warden of the first tree. And that's kind of it. So uh, kind of a middle of the road box, but overall it was fun to open. It was fun to hang out with you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you again real soon. Excuse me, cold. Do you care that I have to film right now? Are you concerned at all about me getting things done that I need to get done? No? Just shut up and rub my belly? Well, poop on you. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, check out some of our most popular playlists from MTG vlogs, sick gameplay videos, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. I upload three to four new Magic the Gathering videos every week. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to crush that subscribe button to join one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channels on YouTube. Talk to you later.